glad you're joining me here again in the great outdoors. Unfortunately, this is the last time you'll be joining me in the great outdoors because I'm currently packing up my campsite. I always find it a little sad when I have to leave, but I've been camping for a long time, so it's time to go home. Now, when breaking camp, it's important to leave your campsite like it was when you arrived. And that means that you have to make sure all the pieces of garbage are picked up all around your campsite, even the tiny little pieces. And most importantly, you have to make sure that your campfire is thoroughly out. You know, it's like Smokey the Bear said, only you can prevent forest fires. <laughs> well, I made sure that my fire had completely burned out and then I poured water over it just to be extra safe. It only takes one little stray spark carried by the wind and fire can spread and take out a whole forest. You know, I'm gonna miss the smell of campfire. Even though I can't take my campfire home with me, there is a type of fire that I can take wherever I go. This isn't a campfire, but rather a spiritual fire. It's a fire that the Holy Spirit puts in our hearts when we believe in Jesus. It's there because God's presence is in us. We can't see it or smell it, but we can feel it. And it, it feels like excitement mixed with love and joy and the desire to share our love of Jesus with others. Sometimes it can feel like a great big flame, and this might happen when we gather together with other Christians and we're worshiping God. And sometimes it can feel like a little burning ember like when we're quietly thanking God for something that he's done for us. Now, in our Bible story today, we're going to hear about the first time that Jesus' followers really experienced the fire of the Holy Spirit. But before we get into our story, say today's big idea with me. The Holy Spirit keeps our fire burning for Jesus. Our Bible story is found in the book of Acts in chapter 2 verses 1 to 12 and the Bible is the word of God and everything in the Bible is true and God uses the Bible to speak to us so let's listen carefully to what he has to say to us today in our story a little while after Jesus had returned back to heaven on the day of Pentecost Jesus followers were gathered together in one place in Jerusalem suddenly a sound came from heaven it was like a strong wind blowing it filled the whole house they were sitting in. And they saw something that looked like fire in the shape of tongues. And the flames separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in languages they had not known before. And the Spirit gave them the ability to do this. Godly Jews from every country in the world were staying in Jerusalem at that time. And a crowd came together when they heard the sound. They were bewildered because each of them heard their own language being spoken. The crowd was really amazed. They asked, aren't all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then why do we hear them speaking in our own native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites. We live in Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia. We're from Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia. Others of us are from Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene. Still others are visitors from Rome. Some of the visitors are Jews and others have accepted the Jewish faith. Also, Cretans and Arabs are here. We hear all these people speaking about God's wonders in our own languages. They were amazed and bewildered. They asked one another, what does this mean? Now, while Jesus was here on earth, he taught his followers about God's love and how God wants us to live. And he reached so many people, but he could only be in one place at one time. He was God, but he was in a man's body when he was on earth. So he went back to heaven and sent his Holy Spirit to the earth. The Holy Spirit is God, but not in a man's body. And the Spirit landed on each of Jesus' followers in that upper room they were in. And he filled them with God's presence. He gave them the ability to tell the good news about Jesus in other languages. In languages they'd never spoken before. 
And he also gave them courage to share this good news. That same fire comes into us when we invite Jesus into our hearts to be our Savior. Jesus puts his Holy Spirit in us. Now, we won't see flames resting on our heads, but we will know that he's there. You can't take a campfire wherever you go, but you can take the fire of the Holy Spirit wherever you go. Those early followers of Jesus went on to spread the good news of Jesus everywhere. The fire of the Spirit spread much further than any forest fire. And Jesus wants you to have this fire burning inside of you as well so that you can have a forever friendship with him and so that you too can spread the good news about him wherever you go and help pass on his fire to others. Jesus' fire is one fire that will never go out. Well, thanks for hanging out with me in the woods these last several weeks. I just have a few more things to clean up before I have to go. But remember, God loves you. And I do too. Bye-bye.